Welcome back to Fans and the Pros. Mike Austin, Deuce McAllister. Joining us now on the telephone is Mike Quick. Played nine seasons for the Philadelphia Eagles at wide receiver, five-time Pro Bowler. He's been a long-time color analyst with the team, 20-plus years. Joins us now. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. We're just kind of looking over the injury list for uh, Sunday. And, you know, we've seen better things, to be quite honest. I don't know if you've had a chance to look at it, but it's not <laughs> it's not the prettiest thing in the world if you're a Saints fan. Now, if you're an Eagles fan and you have not won at home, maybe it's, it's a little different. But... Uh, I would assume, because Eagles fans are pretty adept like New Orleans fans, that given what they've seen of this injury report and how this Saints team has been playing of late, already down a quarterback, that should they somehow lose this game, that they would let their feelings be known publicly. (laughs) It doesn't have to be a game. (laughs) it, It can be from play to play, series to series. They let you know when they're not pleased with what you're doing on the field. That's just the way it is in Philadelphia. And um, I, 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 a little, I know a little bit about the fans down there. Your fans, they're not on and off the bus as quickly as they are in Philadelphia. That's for sure. That's for sure. And, they've, and the Saints fans have had their share early on of, uh, of disappointment. The Eagles started off this year rough as well. They played some good teams But the last, you know, they've won two of their last three, and that Chargers game at home could have easily been a victory. This is a team that is not playing anything like it was in September, winning on the road, running the ball great, and doing so without Miles Sanders, assuming that he'll come back on Sunday. But they've been doing so many things well offensively. Well, Mike, the the thing with this football team is there's a whole lot of uh, youth. And it really starts with the coaching staff, a very young coaching staff that I think they're just starting to learn who their players are and what their players are good at, what their players can do. So it's going to take a little while before this is this thing materialized. They're starting to um, show who they are. They're starting to really show the, the identity that they are big up front. They can run the football. And that's just, I think, who they are going forward. Are they finally figuring out what works for Jalen as well? I mean, because it's one thing to see it on, on, on film, but then really be comfortable in some of the things that they're doing. Are, is that kind of where we are with that staff? So I think early in the season, they were asking him to throw the ball 40 times a game. And he just hasn't played enough football to throw the ball 40 times a game, especially when you have an offensive line that can control the line of scrimmage. If you, and the way they're playing now, it really works well for him. He gets an opportunity to hand the ball off, play action pass, and as you well know, when you start to run the ball well, the play action passing game just opens up. So now he's much more he's a much more efficient quarterback because he's able to lean on the run game. And then, oh by the way, he has the ability to run as well. So it's really who they are right now. And early in the season, these coaches that hadn't figured it out yet. You know, how, how is that offensive line, Jill? Because at one point, I think Kelsey may have been the only starter uh, that was still standing out of the five guys that, you know, kind of started the year. How is that offensive line coming together at this point? Yeah, they're really starting to come together now. And, and you're right. It's because they're healthy. Uh, Lane is back on the right side. Um, Jack Driscoll, a uh, kid that was that's out of Auburn, is playing really good excellent football on the right at the right guard. Kelsey has been a mainstay on the left side. The the kid out of Alabama, Landon Dickerson is such a freaking people mover. Uh, And Jordan Mailata, Jordan Mailata is six, eight, 380 pounds. And, and he can move earth if he chooses to. So, so so they're so big up front. They have to lean on what they can do in, in the run game. You know, just tell us a little bit about that defensive line and how well they're playing as well. Well, I think Hargrave just needed an opportunity to do what he's doing now. Uh, they allow him to get up the field, and, and he's really good at it. He's he's very quick off the ball. Um, so if you sleep on Fletcher or sleep on Hargrave, Fletcher is going to get you. If you sleep on Fletcher, then Hargrave is going to beat most guys in a one-on-one situation. It's funny how teams are now – um, where they would always slide to Fletcher, they're now sliding some to Hargrave. And it's it's kind of a pick-your-poison. Both those guys are playing really good football. 
In Philadelphia, though, if you're not sacking the quarterback, if you're not making tackles, they get on you. So the, the media, the, the fans, they've been on Fletcher Cox a little bit because he's not showing up as much in the stat sheet. But to me, he's still playing really good football.